As the orange orb of a morning sun climbed above the Floridian landscape, the city of Pembroke Pines was awaking to another day of heavy construction. The growing town was always in the process of reinvention, but this morning was different. Underneath the skeletal frame of the soon-to-be mall, something ancient had been disturbed. Detective Samuel Harkness, a man of robust years and silvering hair, was summoned to the site. His steel-gray eyes, hardened by years of trauma and toil, surveyed the scene. His weathered face was set in stoic lines as he listened to the foreman, a stocky man with sweat stains spreading over his orange safety vest, narrating his team's strange find. So we were drilling, right? And suddenly the ground just gave way. He gestured towards a gaping hole cordoned off by fluttering yellow tape. It's some sort of tunnel or something, but old, real old. Samuel nodded, peering into the abyss. The rawness of his memory stirred as he felt a cool, unexpected breeze drifting upwards. The sensation was uncomfortably reminiscent of the deadly stillness before the tornado years ago. Hear anything unusual? He asked, shifting his gaze back to the foreman. The man shuffled uncomfortably. Well, you're gonna think I'm nuts, but some of the boys swear they heard whispers. Whispers, Samuel said, raising a brow. Yeah, the man nodded, looking almost relieved that Samuel didn't instantly dismiss him. Not human-like, more like rhythmical, you know? Chant-like. A shiver ran down his spine, a shiver he dismissed as the morning chill. He thanked the foreman, promising to look into the matter. As he strode away from the sunlit surface towards the spectral underworld, he felt an odd sense of anticipation mixed with dread. Descending into the dimly lit tunnel, the smell of damp earth and ancient decay enveloped him. The lantern in his hand cast elongated shadows that danced on the cavernous walls etched with cryptic symbols, casting a gloom that no sunshine dared pierce. He traced his fingers over one of the carvings, its edges worn by the passing of time. Alone in the labyrinthine quietude, he could hear it, a whisper, soft, barely audible, as if it was the echo of an echo, but rhythmic and deliberate. It was an unspoken language, a chilling chorus that seemed to crawl under his skin. He felt it resonate with something deep within him, a part of him long suppressed by the trauma of his past. By the time he resurfaced, the sun had begun its descent, painting the sky with hues of twilight. He stood at the edge of the hole, lost in thought, oblivious to the flurry of activity around him. The whispers, the ominous aura of the labyrinth, it all clawed at the back of his mind, a puzzle demanding to be solved. He felt an irresistible pull, a call to delve deeper into the mystery, to face the terrors it may unveil. Daylight bathed the city in its bright, vibrant hues as it shone off glass buildings and verdant parklands. In stark contrast, Samuel descended once more into the subterranean crypt, his solitary figure swallowed by the ageless abyss. As he sank deeper, the chatter of the waking city above faded into nothingness, replaced by the stony silence of the underground maze. The walls of the labyrinth were etched with myriad symbols that neither him nor any linguist he consulted could comprehend. They were hauntingly cryptic, their significance locked away by the passage of time. His fingers brushed over their contours, feeling an unnerving, rhythmic vibration beneath his touch, as if the ancient glyphs hummed with a life of their own. The day was spent mapping the labyrinth, tracing the weave of the passages in his notebook, he listened to the whispers as he worked, their volume waxing and waning with his proximity to the symbols. They were more distinct now, like a wind chime in a breeze, yet their meaning remained just out of reach. Around a makeshift fire, the men huddled, their faces drawn and anxious as they shared tales of their experience underground. Samuel listened, his features unreadable, as they spoke of eerie occurrences and an inexplicable sense of dread. I swear there were shadows moving there, detective, one worker confessed, his voice shivering as much as his body. And not ours. They moved on their own, dancing along the walls. Another added, we all felt watched like the walls had eyes. I ain't superstitious, but that ain't right. Though skeptical, he couldn't deny the chill that swept over him. 
He thanked the men for their accounts and walked towards his car, his mind swirling with questions. In the solitude of his home that night, he pored over old newspaper archives, searching for any historical clue about the land on which the mall was being constructed. He found mentions of natural disasters, a pattern of storms and flooding, anomalies that could not be merely coincidental. The whispers echoed in his mind, growing louder as he drew connections between the past and present. As he prepared for bed, he could not shake the sensation of being watched. His home was still, yet shadows seemed to waver, and the night air whispered hauntingly familiar chants. He tried to dismiss it as fatigue, but deep down, he knew better. With a creeping sense of unease, he retired to bed, the whispers accompanying him into a restless sleep. As the moon traced its silver arc across the sky, he lay ensnared by the enigma of the ancient labyrinth, the echoes from the abyss relentlessly pulling him into its heart. With the night's haunting vision still etched in his mind's eye, Samuel found no peace in the dawn. His dreams were dominated by the labyrinth, its alien symbols pulsating in the murky gloom, while spectral whispers coiled around his consciousness like serpents of the deep. He was no longer merely exploring the maze. He was living it, breathing it. As the first golden rays of the morning sun stretched lazily across the city, he drove to the site, the foreboding sensation of his dreams echoing in his soul. Descending into the labyrinth, he found himself surrendering to the whispers, their indecipherable chants echoing around him, enticing him deeper into the abyss. Throughout the day, he found himself not just navigating the physical labyrinth, but also the labyrinthine confines of his mind. The air within the tunnels grew denser with each step, suffused with the scent of earth and something undefinable, ancient and powerful. It was as though he was walking through the pages of time itself, an invisible observer to Epic's past. As the hours waned, he engaged the construction workers in conversation once more, their anxiety-laden tales only deepening the mystery. Their fears no longer seemed absurd. Instead, their experiences mirrored his own, their accounts serving as grim confirmation of the inexplicable events unfolding. One worker, his eyes hollowed by fear, spoke in hushed tones. I heard it again, the whispering, but this time it was louder, angrier. It felt as if it was warning us, warding us off. Yet despite their tales, or perhaps because of them, he was drawn deeper into the puzzle. His mind's gears ground tirelessly, attempting to decipher the whispers, their rhythm now a persistent drum in his mind. Dusk found him in the city library, rummaging through dusty archives and faded maps. His research unveiled a pattern of calamities, a timeline of tragedies that struck with uncanny consistency. Each disaster coincided with attempts to develop the land where the mall now stood. An inexplicable chill coursed through his veins, the whispers of the labyrinth now a loud chorus in his head. As he retired to his home, he felt an oppressive presence surrounding him. The night seemed darker, the shadows more insidious. His dreams were filled with otherworldly whispers, pulsating symbols, and visions of impending disaster. His once peaceful abode felt infiltrated by an unseen entity, its spectral fingers reaching into his very soul. Awakening from a fitful sleep, he realized the boundaries between his waking hours and slumber were blurring. The whispers didn't cease with daylight. They permeated his thoughts, taunting, luring him back into the abyss. The morning sun cast long shadows over Pembroke Pines, belying the simmering dread that enveloped its heart. In the depths of the labyrinth, Samuel was reaching a disturbing realization. The whispers, the symbols, the patterns of catastrophe, everything pointed towards the existence of an ancient cosmic entity, a being birthed from the fabric of chaos itself. He found the symbols pulsating with a newfound intensity, their vibrations reverberating through the ground beneath him, echoing in his bones. Each brush of his fingers sent tendrils of numbing cold coursing through him, their arcane energy clawing at his sanity. As the city buzzed with life above, Samuel studied the ancient symbols, their cryptic patterns now seeming like a celestial map of sorts. 
their pulsating energy began to coalesce into an image, an entity that seemed to shape and reshape itself, an indescribable horror that feasted on disaster and chaos. The whispers grew louder, their chants becoming an ominous dirge. They were not simply a relic of the past, but a call to the entity, a hymn to awaken the harbinger of chaos. Emerging from the labyrinth, he looked over the bustling city with dread. His worst fears were realized when the sky above Pembroke Pines darkened ominously. A sudden, violent storm began to brew, the roiling clouds echoing the chaos awakening beneath the earth. Despite the encroaching terror, he couldn't help but marvel at the entity. It was horrifying and magnificent, a testament to the unyielding power of the cosmos. Its existence was a grim reminder of humanity's insignificance, a sobering truth he had never considered until now. Back at the station, his colleagues reacted with trepidation to the rapidly escalating storm, their chatter filled with apprehension and fear. But amidst the clamor, Samuel found solace in solitude, his office a quiet haven as he grappled with the terrifying reality he had uncovered. On the city streets, people sought shelter, their faces mirroring the dread that gripped him. His connection to the cosmic entity his understanding of the impending doom made him a silent sentinel amidst the brewing storm. As night fell, he knew he had to confront the entity, the monster from the abyss. His resolve was akin to a lone ship sailing into a tempest, his fight mirroring his lifelong battle with the trauma of his past. As the first rumblings of thunder echoed through Pembroke Pines, he steeled himself for the impending chaos. He was an island of calm in a sea of uncertainty a man prepared to face the awakened dark. He knew the following day would bring the storm, the entity, the climax of his investigation. And with this knowledge, he was ready to step into the eye of the storm. The morning broke with an ominous hush over Pembroke Pines, the calm before the storm. Samuel, standing at the mouth of the labyrinth, felt the ground shudder beneath him, the city echoing his own foreboding anticipation. The whispers were no longer whispers, but roars echoing from the abyss, their rhythmic chants shaking the foundations of the city. He knew the time had come. He felt a strange sense of serenity, his fears drowned by his resolve. His battle was not just with the entity, but with his own past, his own trauma. It was a confrontation with the chaos within and without. Descending into the labyrinth for the final time, he felt the whispers intertwine with his thoughts their alien language seeping into his psyche. The symbols pulsed with an almost blinding intensity, their cryptic forms becoming clear to him. He understood them now. They were not just an ode to the entity, but a plea for balance. The entity was a creature of chaos, of destruction, but it was also a part of the cosmic cycle, a being that reset the balance when humanity disrupted it. The entity didn't create chaos it reflected the chaos that was already present. Outside, the sky roiled with dark clouds, the violent tempest echoing the turmoil beneath. Standing in the heart of the labyrinth, he found himself at the epicenter of the entity's power. He felt it pulse around him, its power ebbing and flowing like an otherworldly tide. He could feel it resonate within him, its chaotic energy matching the tumult of his own emotions, his own past. And then he did what he knew he had to do. He spoke. He spoke in the language of the whispers, his voice echoing in the cavernous labyrinth. It was not a plea for mercy, but a promise of understanding, an acknowledgement of the entity's purpose. The labyrinth shook violently, the tremors echoing his heartbeat. He was a part of the chaos, the storm, the entity. His trauma, his past, his fears were mirrored in the tempest brewing above. He was not fighting the storm, but embracing it, accepting its power and his own in the grand scheme of the cosmos. As the storm reached its climax above, he felt a rush of energy unlike anything he had experienced before. It was terrifying, overpowering, and yet strangely liberating. He felt the pain of his past, the terror of the tornado, the guilt of survival, all being washed away in the chaos. And then with a final deafening roar, the labyrinth collapsed around him, the earth swallowing the enigmatic maze. He didn't fight it, but accepted it, 
It was not an end, but a new beginning, a transformation as profound as the entity itself. In the aftermath of the storm, Pembroke Pines emerged scarred yet unbroken. The mall, the symbol of disruption, lay in ruins, the city bearing the mark of the entity's passage. And at the heart of the destruction lay Samuel, his life's journey culminating in a harmony with the cosmos that transcended his earthly existence. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed our content, show your support with a like and subscribe, and stay notified by hitting the bell icon. Expect more cosmic horror from Eldritch Tales Factory, and feel free to explore our other stories. See you in the next video.